I've always been so called either discovered or suddenly somebody has just come you know it's happened out of the blue without me really going for it uh, no matter how good you are uh, you know there are points where somebody may not be better than you but somebody may be luckier than you and in the correct place the correct time which is why they get the project and you don't okay so you don't have to put yourself down saying they're better than yeah i never do that to have not let anything as big or as small go to your head to leave your ego far away and just do your job for because you love it hello everyone welcome to success stories talk show season 2 presented by trident communications in association with world humanitarian foundation i am alka your host for today and as our guest for today we have suchitra pillai she is an indian actress model anchor and vj and now that she is here with us on this episode of success stories let's hear from her her journey of success hello suchitra hi. how are you hi hi very good thank you are you forgot to mention compare theater net uh, uh, you know singer dubbing artist all those things mother sister <laughs> Yes, I'm all of those things. I'm fight, all of those yeah, things. Get to know about it from you. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for giving us your time for this episode, and welcome to Success Stories. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. So, Suchitra, you have done your engineering, but then you came to the entertainment industry. So, what made that change happen? You know, it was not a it was not a, um, a thought out uh, decision. I did engineering, and then in my final year of engineering, I got married and I moved to England. Yeah, uh, I was very young at that point. That was my first marriage, and when I moved to England, you know, to work as an engineer, I would have had to study two more years for my degree to be recognized in the UK. So I didn't uh, do that, and you know, I started doing various things. I worked in a restaurant uh, as a hostess. you know i was not one of those padaku type people you know who wanted to just uh, all the time study and design printed circuit boards and what have you i was not that at all so so basically i um, uh, you know started working this restaurant and it was like a really it was a, a, a brilliant experience for me because you know that was a it was a place where i got to meet uh, all film stars you know hollywood film stars and pop stars etc but in india i had never you know really acted or anything i had uh, done amateur theater when i was like 10 12 years old you know and two musicals in in bombay but uh, and i had done modeling from 17 to 19 you know i'm now i'm not really a model but i do bits and pieces um but uh, yeah i was a you know tv television commercial model yeah and out of the blue one day uh, there was a i was with one model agency in the uk and they called me up uh, one day and they said oh there is a casting director who is looking for an indian actress to play the lead in a french movie okay so they said oh do you act so i said you know it's always been something i'm interested in i've only done bits and pieces in my teen you know early teens um but it's something that i'm tr- interested in so they said would you like to go for the audition for the casting so i said yes of course so i went for the casting in my sari and all that's what i used to wear at the restaurant so i say from there i went to the i went to the uh, the casting and it was uh, the the casting director was jennifer jaffrey um uh, the wife of uh, you know the late said jaffrey and um Yeah, uh, she. Uh, you know, with me there were a few other girls who were all trained actresses. You know, they are studying at Rada and Shada and all of these places in the UK. And um, basically, I overheard her. She gave all of us two scenes from the film to do, to to do for the reading. The they were very intense scenes. Um, one was extremely emotional where I had to break down and cry and everything like that. So I was reading it. You know, saying okay, चलो देखा जाएगा what's to happen. And then. I overheard the girl in front of me before me going in, and I overheard her telling Jennifer, "Oh, you know, we only had ten minutes to go through this. Uh, I can't really get into the skin of the character, and I'll just do the reading and I'll go." So I was like, "Okay, fine." She did her reading and she went. Next was my turn, and I went inside. And I'm telling you this whole story because this is how my life changed. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I went inside, and Jennifer said, uh, "Oh, hello. You know who are you?" And I said, "So Chitra." And I said. Uh, um, she said how long have you been acting for so i said ma'am this is my first audition so she was like oh okay fine and she said uh, please sit down let's do the reading i said no i would like to act out the scenes for you she said sorry i said i would like to act it out for you you read, you read the other part and i'll play my part so she said okay and then she said okay use the papers i said no i don't want to use the papers i've memorized it she said you memorized both scenes 
I said, yeah, I've memorized more scenes. Um, I think my engineering college ratifying, I think that is what helped me over there. <laughs> but uh, I, I said, you just play the other part. If I forget in between, I'll fill it up with something. I'll just take it as it comes. So I did both the scenes for her. She was playing the other part. And by the end of the second scene, I had actually broken down. I was crying as the scene demanded. Yeah, uh, I was at her feet and I was actually tears and I was I had broken down and I was like fully in it and crying. And I could see a sense of shock in Jennifer's face. And, you know, she picked me up and she put me on the sofa next to her. And she just looked at me and I was still in it. You know, I was still, I had not gotten out of that whole, you know, that crying space, etc. I was completely in it. And she looked at me and straight and she said, please tell me the truth, Suchitra. How many years have you been acting? And that is what changed my life. Yeah. And I said, ma'am, this is my first audition. And she said, you do realize this is what you need to be doing. And that's how it all changed for me. I got selected for this movie. Uh, that's the first thing. For others, I was 23 when I did that. I'm 51 now and proudly so. So it's been like a long journey, 27, 28 years. Yes. <laughs> That has been an incredible journey. So, you know, engineering to entertainment. So one is like a very stable option. And uh, yes. usually uh, with Indian households, it is such a thing that, oh, you are doing something on the academic front. Why do you have to go to something which is so unstable and so uncertain? Yes, yes. So what was your family's reaction when you decided to go with it? Like, were they you know, I have to say, uh, I have to say, I mean, this time it was my husband's family because I was already married when all of this started. When I was in Bombay and it was modeling that was happening, it was happening during the time of my engineering. It was like good pocket money. My parents knew that I was still doing my engineering. So it was okay, you know. Um, but this was after my marriage. I was already married and they knew that I was an engineer, etc., whatever. And, you know, now I'm working in a restaurant and, uh, you know, uh, doing this, that and the other. And suddenly when this thing came up, and it was a big move, actually, for a 23-year-old year old to go to Sri Lanka for six weeks out of the blue like that, you know, to shoot, uh, to be the lead in a, in a movie, etc. But I have to say credit to my ex-husband and his parents. They, you know, they are in the UK, um, uh, K.N. Malik and Lili Das Malik and their son, um, Pavan. And I have to give them credit because they were just so, so cool about it all. They were not like, Vidi, you know, come on, why don't you get a job as, a, as an engineer? Never. Never. They were just like, wow, this is great. You know, uh, go ahead and try it. You know, so that was lucky for me. That was really lucky for me. And they, you know, so they kind of paved the way for me to feel confident about, you know, not having to, oh my God, kaise balance karungi? And, you know, that type of uh, thing. And um, yeah, and that's how it all started. And when I came back, Jennifer, when I came back from Sri Lanka, Jennifer said, I'd like to be your agent. She was a casting director and she started an agency with me as her first client. Yeah. Oh, and uh, after that, I started doing, you know, radio drama, uh, play, uh, plays, uh, theater, actual theater, uh, musicals, uh, lots of radio plays, you know, uh, one thing after another. And that's how I just kept continuing until I came back. OK, so the first assignment just, you know, kind of happened. Yeah. So was there any struggle involved before that while you were uh, in those days when you were modeling? No, you know, uh, there was frankly no struggle involved because I've been touch wood you know as people would say silver spoon type of thing that has happened in my life is I've always been so-called either discovered or suddenly somebody has just come you know it's happened out of the blue without me really going for it you know without me saying you know I think God just gave me a direction that this is what you're supposed to be doing and I saw how much I love being in it and that's how it just came to me you know I'm uh, you know instead of being an engineer this is what I need to be doing so uh, but I didn't uh, um, you know it, 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 it all just happened I didn't never never said you know even over here in Bombay or or, or in the UK I never really said Ari yaar, actor banna hai, ye banna hai, wo banna hai. it was all one thing after another it, it all just started happening uh, for uh, modeling when I was in India sun silk shampoo somebody the the casting director for Hindustan Diva she saw me somewhere I had very very long hair you know they cast me that was my first ad you know something like this for this movie was my first film you know I came back to India and then you know, Farhan Akhtar, a friend of mine, you know, uh, Goldie Bell, another friend. My first two movies were with them without doing any auditions, nothing, you know. So it was, it's all just, uh, it's uh, happened very well for me, thank God, you know. Um, without me really, um, I can't say I struggled, you know, I can't say I struggled. And it would be, uh, you know, uh, not fair for me to say because I've seen people who struggle in this industry, you know. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say I struggled. But um, I would say that I'm happy. I've always been happy with the journey. 
you know, I've always been happy with the way things have gone. Um, my life could have changed when I was doing, doing engineering. I was offered Jojita Vahi Sikandar, that movie with Amir Khan, uh, Aisha Jhulka's role. And I was in my first year of engineering and uh, they said, basically six months, you'll have to give up, you know. Uh, and I said, no, 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 I engineer to do And I didn't do it. And, uh, but who knows, you know, Naseeb me likha hai, as they say, you know, um, that was supposed to be Aisha doing that role. She did that role, you know. Uh, I was supposed to only meet Amir Khan during Dil, Ta- Dil Chata and it happened then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so life, I mean, I've taken it as it comes. All right. So, since you are from Mumbai and Mumbai is the city of dreams, like everyone who wants to get into yes. acting travels from various cities to Mumbai. So, would you say that you living in Mumbai gave you an edge over other people? Mm, 100%. 100%. Also, the fact that I was kind of a known face in the sense people, when I came back in 1997 after my divorce, my separation, um, uh, people still remembered, yeah, uh, that Suchi had done a few ads, etc. before, so before seven years. But, uh, the good thing for me was I was in a music video by Apache Indian called Arranged Marriage, which was shown on all the music channels here while I was living in London. I was in a music video for Bali Sagu's Dil Cheese, which was shown on all the, you know, music channels here, you know, while I was still in the UK. So somehow my face was still in the in the news, you know, per se, as in somebody, you know, it was not as in brand new. She's come back seven years later. And immediately after I came back, I got a job as uh, a VJ at Channel V. So that was huge ex- exposure. You know, so uh, straight away, you know, I got back into uh, into the swing of things uh, that way. So, so Chitra, you made your debut as a singer and your first song was uh, Such Is Life. So can you please tell yeah. us a little bit about that? The first album, yeah, was called Such Is Life. Uh, there was no song called Such Is Life in it. But uh, yeah, the album was called Such Is Life or Suchi Is Life, the way you read it. Yeah. Um, and it was um, an indie pop album. It was, uh, you know, released online. Didn't do so great. Uh, whatever but it was my release it was it's always been my passion I've been singing since I was six or seven years old so it was something that I was very happy to be able to do and I wrote the songs myself Ashish Painoli uh, he did the music for it and it uh, uh, there are some beautiful songs in it you know English and Hindi it was a mixture whereas my second music album which is ready for release is now an English rock album called the history of rock history of rock and roll and it is um, again I have written all of the songs and it's very Brit Brit rock of the 90s that kind of sound so it's melodious rock uh, and it's English. All right. and All I've the been... very best for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you have worked in theater, movies, you have anchored, sung, and you have also done TV shows. And now you've also worked in web series. So which one? And as a dubbing say? artist. <laughs> and as a dubbing artist. So yeah. which one would you say is the work that you enjoyed the most? You know, as an actor, I'm so happy that, you know, Alka, that I have been able to tap all of the uh, you know, the whole uh, spectrum of acting. Yeah, and I've not been, I've not been stuck to only one name is a TV karungi or name is a film karungi, you know, not that type of a person at all. Uh, and I'm very, very happy because each one of them has their own, you know, has their own uh, plus points, USPs. Um, left to me, if it paid really well, theater is a huge buzz for me. It really is, you know, um, because it's on the spot. It is a true measure of your talent. Yeah, any theater actor will tell you it is really it is a true measure of your talent because either people clap for you or they throw tomato, you know, at you and send you off the stage. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for a critics review and you don't have to wait for something else. You, um, you know, either you're good or you're not, you know, your job or you don't, you know, there's no retakes. Go on that stage, whether you have butterflies in your stomach, whether you've forgotten everything, you have to perform because they're all sitting there. So it's that, it's that excitement, which really gets me. I love theater, which is why. Even now, I make the time for theatre no matter what else I'm doing. I'm still doing a play with Lilette Dubey called Dance Like a Man. We have been doing the play for over 23 years. The same cast for 23 years. I was 27 when I joined it. I'm 51 now and I'm still playing a 25-year-old in that play. So, (laughs) yeah, I play a double role in that. And it's still my most favourite play that I've done to date. Um, But yeah, you make the, we make the time for theatre. I make the time for theatre. But I love everything else. I mean, film, who doesn't want to see, you know, yourself on 70mm, you know, big in the theatre. And I've done Hollywood. I've done two films in Hollywood. I've done, you know, Bollywood films. I've And I've worked with some incredible directors, you know. Uh, thank you, God. You know, it's been, uh, whether it's a Madhur, Madhur Bandarkar or a Pradeep Sarkar or Farhan Akhtar, I've worked with all of these people. And it's been fantastic. And actor-wise too, I mean, my first co-star, Saif Ali Khan, what, can you, what more can you ask, you know? I mean, 
uh, at that time uh, it was just wow uh, you know things really really happened well then again my job at channel v was happening simultaneously i was a vj at at channel v while i got dil chata hai and everything i continued to be <clears throat> part of channel v and it was uh, it, it was amazing it was the job to have you know as uh, a 20 something year old you get a great pay you get the fame you get the fortune you get to travel around uh, you know you work in this fantastic uh, company called channel v and um but that too like i went out there and i got that job that didn't fall in my lap okay everything uh, i although i say that yes i may have had silver spoon it's not because i've not made an attempt okay even for that audition yeah i i've never sat there saying are nahi yaar ho jayega no you know i go out there and i do what i got to do and i still do it today at my age also and after 27 years in the industry i still do it because whether it was the movie I, you know, I made it a point to sit there and study those lines and then make a success of it. You know, whether it was becoming a VJ when I met the general manager of Channel V at a party in Bombay, he said, "Oh, I'm the general manager of this music channel called Channel V," and I said, "Oh, I've just come back from the UK. I've seen your channel. It's great, but it's your loss because I'm not on it." I actually said that to him, and he said, "What?" And I said, "No, seriously, it's a great channel, but you know, it's damn sad that I'm not on it." So he said, "Let me give you an audition. You know, are you interested?" And I said, "Yeah, of course." they gave me an audition next the following week and two weeks later hong kong they called and they said you are approved we are starting a show for you on channel v so you see it's that you know it's it's getting out there and doing something for yourself uh, not sitting there saying jo hoga dekha jayega in some certain areas of life you can you can think about it that way but when it comes to work um, you've got to have ambition you've got to have drive and you've got to believe in your talent you've got to believe in what you are capable of doing you know so um and don't let anybody else tell you anything otherwise you know i always say don't let anyone decide what you can be or what you can't be you know you have to believe it yourself and then just go for it so yeah so I, you know coming back around to all the various things that i've done i mean it's just been it's been wonderful you know and i also think because our job is such an insecure career especially acting in bollywood is is so insecure i'm very very grateful that i'm doing so so much else So if there is no film happening now, there's OTT platform something I'm shooting for. If that's not happening, I have a play happening in two months' time. If that's not happening, I'm dubbing for something else. I'm doing a radio play for Audible. You know things like that. Um, uh, so there's always something that keeps me going. But I make sure that there is something that keeps me going. I still call up casting directors when I have no work. Uh, people say, "Are you kya suchi? You know, thoda diva ban. You know, what's wrong with you? Why you have to make the call?" I said because I'm the one who's sitting at home. I don't have the work right now. they don't even know that i'm not working right now so i'm going to call them up and tell them i'm free kuch hai kya i don't see any ego i don't see any ego in that because it is an art that i love it is i love my job i mean i'm not just saying it i i get emotional when i say it i love it that much you know any little bit of acting that i do whether it's you know standing just watching a screen and dubbing or whether it's me i told you i get emotional <laughs> but or or whether it's you know any type of acting i love it i love it and i feel grateful that you know that uh, i was given a chance to do what i love to do you know i relate so much with you because i am that kind of a person that i need to have something to do it's like yeah. uh, even yeah. if people ask me that alka how are things happening how did this happen and i'm like oh, i yeah. just feel like things just fall for me and it happens yeah. but yeah. again the same thing goes you, around you that, make the effort exactly you yeah. make the effort to make it happen for you yes it may feel like ha ah, ho gaya yaar i didn't think about it and it came but no subconsciously it's you putting it out there man you're saying you want it so badly you want it so much the universe has no other uh, work than to give it to you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when i actually asked this question to you i was actually assuming that you would say theater because uh, the way you portrayed your first yes. audition so uh, yes. there was nothing else that i was expecting you would say that you love more than theater yeah yeah and it is so, the true test of an actor you know it really is So in this long journey, ah, uh, you there must be days where you would feel ah uh, very demotivated. So who has been your yes. biggest support and inspiration in this journey? You know, ah, uh, there are many. As I said, because it is such an insecure career, you know, rejection is one huge big thing. Um, you know, in our in our world, in show in the showbiz world, which you really need to get used to. Yeah, no matter how good you are, ah, uh, you know, there are points where. somebody may not be better than you but somebody may be luckier than you and in the correct place at the correct time which is why they get the project and you don't okay so you don't have to put yourself down saying they're better than yeah i never do that i just say okay it was not meant for me 
you know, um, uh, that type of thing. But as far as how I deal with it is, there are some, a few things that are big disappointments, you know, supposing I've been seen for a Hollywood film, which I was really looking forward to. And that didn't happen. Yeah, because it was between me and two, three other girls from India. Yes, you feel a little bit, you feel a little bit sad about it. But what is the point of sitting and, you know, breaking your head and doing sapphire? Oh my God, by me, you know, there is no need, to, you know, you have to, you have to go with it and say, okay, this one was not for me. Something else will come up. You know, maybe there's a reason I was not supposed to do this particular uh, thing. And so many other projects, you know, international or otherwise there have been, which it's as if they were tailor-made for me, you know. And uh, when I have done the project, they've turned around and said, Suchitra, there was no other choice. It was you, you know, that we wanted when we saw the, and they feel so good. So, you know, it's win some, lose some. This, you have to, you have to uh, be able to learn that concept in, our, in this career. Win some, lose some. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Move on, kuch aur ho jayega, you know. Definitely. So, talking about such days, ups and downs are part of life. So, when you have your ups and downs, how do you deal with them? I kind of, uh, well, I surround myself with friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, I listen to music. Yeah, that's one That's one thing. And I kind of just try and get my mind, uh, my mind off it. It doesn't really bring me down uh, too much. I will not allow uh, depression or anything to get into my system. That's not me. Uh, you know, I have always picked up the pieces and started over no matter what, whether it was divorce, whether it was, uh, you know, moving countries, uh, this, that and the other. And that's never been a fear for me, you know, so I don't get worried about things not working out. If this doesn't work out, something else will work out has always been my uh, mantra, you know, and um, so I don't let it get me down. And if it does, and if I feel a little bit, you know, I feel a little bit either I write, uh, maybe I write a song. Um, or I do a little bit of meditation or I listen to some music or I'll just surround myself with friends, sit and chat with them and get it out of my system, you know, that way. That's that's really nice. So, uh, Suchitra, it so happens that we have a lot of things on our mind that, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. But uh, due to time constraints, we don't do yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, when COVID happened, uh, we had a lot of time, to be very honest. So yes. is there something that you took up on that something that you wanted to do since a very long time and you thought this, okay, this is the perfect time for this? Yeah, so there's, a, I mean, co well, cooking, I've always cooked. Uh, I was happy during COVID time to be able to have an opportunity to cook more uh, for my family. And, you know, it, it's therapy for me, uh, you know, complete therapy. I love, I love cooking. And um, another thing that I did, you can see it in the background, actually there, I'll show you another one. I started something called diamond paintings, okay? And it's like, that is like major therapy for me. If you give me a minute, I'm going to show you something. Okay. This is okay. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So there's this. So if you see each and every one of these is a separate bead, okay? Yeah. Uh, similarly, similarly, the one in the background there, which I did for my daughter. Bear with me. I'll show it to you. Um, this one okay so there this is my my daughter and her little cat like an angel yeah and if you can see each one of these is a little little dot it's a little bead tiny little bead yeah. so there's over 10 12 thousand pieces on this painting and you have to stick it yourself you have to stick okay. each piece yourself so it is therapy you know, you have this design on the paper. You have 25 packets of different beads which have a code according to the color and then that's how you sit and do it. So that is one thing. Uh, you know, I, arts and crafts, I didn't think I was very inclined towards that, but this really got me. And after this, I've done about eight other uh, diamond paintings like this. So that's definitely one thing during pandemic that I did. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. So you you told us about one of the songs that you are waiting for, uh, like this uh, new album that you are yeah. waiting for apart from that are there any uh, upcoming future projects that you would like to share with the audience lots of stuff lots and lots of stuff last year when the uh, the lockdown lifted and we started shooting i did between september and december i did about seven or eight projects uh, already you know which will all be coming out this year of which only two projects have, are, are out already uh, the malayalam film cold case um, uh, and hello mini season three on mx player uh, the next thing that you'll see is Call My Agent on Netflix. I shot another Amazon Prime show called Bestseller She Wrote. I've shot um, uh, <clears throat> another, uh, well, I'm starting a new Netflix show. I've um, also shot uh, Masaba 2, uh, you know, season 2 of Masaba. 
there's that also coming up there is there's loads of stuff that i've done i've done you know the, an english movie called culture vulture i've done another film called drama yama a short film with rene sen um darshil sapari um did that so there's lots of stuff that i've already shot all of this is already shot and it'll all be coming out this year but there's new stuff that's happening also which i start from literally from next week and i starting a podcast i'm starting um again a new netflix show as i said and uh, yeah possibly a few other uh, shows in the pipeline so there's lots to look forward to film wise i really hope i get a film it's been a while since i've done uh, you know a film um so i really hope uh, something comes up there and uh, even though you know sadly cinemas etc are not open uh, i'd love to do but theater is happening again once as soon as we were supposed to do a show in september since the theaters are not open it's moved to november so we will see but theater also keeping in touch with that maybe starting a new play with uh, lilet to be that may happen too so oh, all right all the very best for all the projects first of all and uh, two things actually so i have i have already watched hello pretty season 1 and i was yeah. waiting for two, like uh, i don't know i watched two and watch three please watch three now i'm in three i, yeah, I play this i play this god woman character who's very she's very sly yeah that's okay. not me but that's me the um, the character <laughs> and this other show that you told uh, call my agent i was actually yeah. having my lunch today and i was looking on youtube to watch something you saw and the trailer I yeah i came across the trailer and i was like okay yes. i'll let's just keep it to watch later so i'm just going to so yeah it's at the right end uh, it's at the end of the month it comes out at the end of the month and i play uh, if you see there's only one shot of me at the end of the trailer you watch it again you'll see there's me crying at the end of the trailer doing this yeah when you watch the trailer you will see i'm the, uh, you will see me right at the end i play rajat kapoor's wife in the in the series so nice role for season 1 yeah all right so all the very best for that pleasure also and talking about your journey has there been an unforgettable moment or event that you would like to share with the audience wonderful there's been so many unforgettable events um one uh, huge one was anthony hopkins when i met anthony hopkins um at the bombay brasserie restaurant where i used to work it was after silence of the lambs the movie and he was of of course you know huge at that time i had just joined the bombay brasserie i was 21 years old and um i was my, uh, as as i was the hostess i was made to seat him there was him emma thompson and uh, ismail merchant who had come for for lunch and i sat, sat them at the table that they because they are you know vip clients and sat, sat them down and 5 minutes later my manager calls me up and he says so chitra please go and tell mr hopkins that his raw lamb chops will be ready soon and i said ha huh? he said raw lamb chops will be ready soon go and tell him so i said okay and this is after silence of the lamb the movie yeah so uh, where he's eating you know human flesh etc uh, so uh, i went to the table and he, they were talking and he said yes and i said sir your raw lamb chops will be with you shortly okay and he continued Five minutes later, the head chef calls me to the kitchen and he says, "Suchitra, these are special guests. Please go and serve Mr. Hopkins his food." And on a plate, there were two raw lamb chops with blood and everything on the plate. Yeah, not cooked, nothing. Yeah, and with the celery and all this decoration on it. I said, "What?" I said Suchitra, he is important. Please go and give it to him. Please go and give him this. And I was like, "My God, I'm 21 years old, you know." And I was shaking my hands, was shaking with this plate, and I go to the table. and they're still discussing something this is i mean emma thompson and then he hopkins is imagine and he looks up and i said so your raw lamb chops and he says okay and i put it in front of him and i could not believe that this man was going to eat it i was like as a method actors bhi hote hain you know who he must have practiced with raw meat for the movie etc etc but i wanted to see whether he would eat it so i'm walking back as i say dekhte hue you know as if uh, no. he's going just to check and see yeah whether he started eating it or not like that and he called me he saw me and he called me I was like, "Oh my God, what happened? What happened?" So I went up to the went up to the table, and I'm standing there, and he's just looking at me like this. I'll never forget his. I says, "Anthony Hopkins." He, I'll never forget his eyes. And he looks up at me like this, and I'm just saying, "Sir, sir, sir." And suddenly he caught my hand, and he kissed my hand, and he looked up at me, and he said, "Suchitra, I don't really bite. This was a joke that we decided to play. Your manager wanted us to do it." So can you imagine, Sir Anthony Hopkins? This is a story I will forget. never forget for the rest of my life i mean he agreed the humility of film stars abroad this is it yeah my manager went and told them she's brand new over here first time she's seeing all these film stars from hollywood etc etc so do you mind if we have a little bit of fun with her and he agreed to this whole thing he didn't need doesn't need raw lamb chops for heaven's sake you know but they just made me believe that this is what 
it is and i was so embarrassed that they were having such a laugh at my expense so these have been the fantastic experiences that i've had which i wouldn't exchange for the world you know i don't think anybody else can say a story like that you know about about anthony hopkins it's something that um i I'll, i'll cherish for the rest of my life there's just been there's been many many experiences uh like this uh, meeting robbie williams i was on top of the pops with bali sagu though i'd never sang on the album i was in the video of the album i mimed the whole song on top of the pops um uh and uh, take that with robbie williams gary balo they were all the next band playing and yeah uh, uh, robbie williams says hey bali he called me bali thinking because bali sagu standing at the back yeah playing on the thing and it was written bali sagu dil cheese and i'm miming the song because i was you know in the video the singer was from pakistan so she was not there in england to record it so she gave me permission to do the miming and after the rehearsal uh, suddenly i hear hey bali bali and bali sali me look look they're calling you i said no they're calling you they said no no they think he said they think you are bali sagu because that's all it says bali sagu dil cheese they say don't know that i am bali you know so i turned around and it's robby williams standing in the corridor and he says hey bali great track i love your voice neither the voice was mine i'm not <laughs> bali both but you know it <laughs> so it's experience i said and bali is like chup kar chup kar keep quiet just walk say thank you just walk just walk kar said yeah thank you thank you very much very excited yeah so it's been strange uh, strange strange stories that have there's been it'll take a it'll take a while to go through all of my stories but in every walk of uh, my career be it there's always been something interesting that's happened that's great so uh, <laughs> when you have been in a journey for so long like 27 years so yes yes you have to have a personal life mantra to keep up every day to get up and motivate yourself to work so what is your personal life mantra i think uh, my personal life mantra is probably reach for the stars because there won't be any fences to stop you you know i always believe that uh, set your goals uh, set reasonable goals um, you know uh, and believe in yourself that's all it takes okay uh in an industry like mine i keep telling people there are thousands you know who want to be part of the industry some get lucky some don't get lucky uh give yourself a certain amount of time where you say okay i'm going to give it my all whether it's doing the auditions whether it's doing the photo shoots whether it's doing whatever making the rounds of the casting directors i will give myself this much time so many months or so many years or whatever then if it doesn't happen then don't break your head on a wall you know then try and do something which is connected to it maybe uh you know or uh, just to be part of the thing work behind the scenes you never know if your luck might change later on but um you have to be realistic also is what i say yeah. you know um you have to know uh, up to where you can draw the line and say are i mean i uh, there are so many things that i can't do uh you know uh, and i have to accept that i can't i can't really do those things someone says oh you know do what uh, uma thurman uh, did in in kill bill you know that kind of fighting that kind of uh, whatever i right now i would say no my god i won't be able to do it you know that type of thing so know your limits but don't put yourself in the background don't ever say that i i cannot do it you know you, you have to give yourself a chance to try yeah so try and then after that you know set goals uh, accordingly and just go for it definitely so uh, in the beginning i talked about world humanitarian foundation and there are associated partner so and the work towards women empowerment uh so yes. if we were asking you about your views about women around the world uh, would you like to share that with the audience i think i mean you know i've done i've done a few things as far as women empowerment is concerned a film called karkash uh directed by kamal sadana a very powerful film uh it had to do with women empowerment as well um uh, you know and i have uh, you know i've done talks etc on the very same subject and uh, i did a tedx talk which was about why being whole is necessary that was the topic why being you know complete is necessary and it was about how women as women we don't need anybody else to dictate our happiness we don't need anybody else to make us what we are you know that's what the talk was uh, was about and how you can i think it is you know um it's an important thing that people need to talk about i think i'm very glad that people are you know waking up and 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 realizing that you know we are not a we are not a, a species to be uh, taken lightly at all um you know uh, there's stuff that we do that even men can't do uh, yeah try having a baby or ha- or getting your period for example you know one of the two <laughs> they won't be able to handle it seriously so um uh we are powerful you know i've always believed that we you know we are definitely powerful and i think we for for us to get into those um, 
stigmas or to get into that norm. You know, actually, just last night, an ad of mine just released here in India uh, for uh, a jewelry commercial called Candare Jewels. It's it's online, and you'll see it's again breaking the stigma about older woman, younger guy. Yeah, the 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 concept is that the script is that. So you know, little little things like that, which has been there for centuries in in you know in India in people's minds. You know about ladki ko aisa hona chahiye ya aurat ko aisa hona chahiye ya aise karna chahiye. You know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's uh, it's ridiculous. I think we have to live with the times. We have to move with the times and know that, uh, you know, being oppressed, being repressed is is definitely not on any woman's agenda in this day and age. And for those people who are sadly in situations where they can't get out of it, it's us who have to stand up for them and and see to it that you know that they can uh, they can be saved or they can be brought out of it. So, yeah, I think women helping women that's the biggest thing. All right. So and now that we are heading towards the end of today's episode, and the name of our show is Success Stories. So, if you had to define success, how would you define? Um, success is the feeling that that comes to you when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and you tell yourself, "What I've achieved up to now is enough." Yeah, but I am not going to kill my ambition. Okay, that's success for me. You know. uh being grateful and being content with everything that you've done up to now but knowing that there is so much more to come yeah that is success for me for me um i mean if you if you're looking at it you know in a so called superficial materialistic way uh, i would say success for me was you know getting my first award uh, after 25 years in the industry 23 years in the industry um my first award in, was an international award Uh, for best actress uh, at the Long Island International Film Festival, and the same for the same movie at the Milan International Film Festival, uh, called uh, the film called The Valley, the Hollywood film that I did, and to walk on that stage, I mean, it's something that I've always not saying, "Arey me ko award chahiye," not that you know, I got awards for my TV serials and everything like that, but the fact that when you give your whole heart to a project, and The Valley was that for me, um, it was about the mother who loses this sixteen-year-old daughter. to teenage uh, suicide you know because of teenage depression very very intense uh, movie and for me it was like me having a uh, being a mother of a 13 year old it was really you know clo- uh, you know intense for me to do that and I, so i gave my whole heart to that movie and for that when you are appreciated and people turn around and say wow man she really did a good job and you get you know appreciated for that and it took 23 years yes you know for somebody to turn around and say best actress you know no matter what but um so going up on that stage to collect that award in uh, uh long island in america was uh, i think yeah quite an experience for me to be able to be able to say i'd like to thank you know we've all <laughs> we've all, we've always mentioned that yeah i'd like to thank um but you know and people who have brought me to where i am uh today and you have to always remember that especially in our industry alka you know you've got to you have to know that you are not bigger then your ego should never be bigger than you know who you are you should never um if you're a so called i hate the word star i hate that word i am an artist i'm an actor okay uh, i'm not a star uh, and i i never intended to be a star they are twinkling in the sky and let them be there you know we are <laughs> we are actors so to be grounded yeah it's like the i'm anthony hopkins story that i told you humility you know what does it take to be you know humble to be approachable uh, to your fans don't put on that mask don't put on this oh, no sorry sorry no photos no no sorry no for what they are the people who got you there if they were not switching on that television to watch your tv serial or go and spending their 300 rupees and watching you in the theater you know who who would you be yeah so who are you to turn around and say no to somebody like that when they just want a photograph or they just want to talk to you for 2 minutes you know so that i think a lot of people in our industry don't have and i think it's one of the biggest things and i mean that from the bottom of my heart alka you know it ha- it's one of the biggest things for success that to me is success to have not let anything as big or as small go to your head to leave your ego far away and just do your job for because you love it that is success to me definitely so thank you so much suchitra for putting out that great message out there for the viewers and giving us this time for this episode of success stories Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been fabulous being here. Thanks a lot.
yeah, it was a lovely chat with you, to be very honest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining with us on this episode of Success Stories. And if you want to watch more such stories, just subscribe to our channel. <laughs>